We're 1991. I am 21 years old. I am working in a club as a bouncer. You can easily imagine that. <laughs> to make ends meet, of course. That means that I was always there when bands came in to sound check. I was always their witness. November 16th that year, a guy walked in by the name John Martin. I have never heard about anyone called John Martin. He walks up stage, picks up his guitar, and as soon as he starts playing music, it's pure magic. Sincerely, it's pure magic. I have never experienced anything like it. This was the best experience ever, the best performance ever. I felt energy, I felt electricity, I felt inspired. I wanted to become a performer. This was great, I was in the moment. I bought his album. And when I got home after work, I was looking forward to listen to it, to revisit that moment. And I couldn't be more disappointed. Why? It's a great album, it was a great recording, but all that was magic was missing. All the energy, all of the electricity was not there. Why? Why? Does one, is one not able to catch a moment? When one is recording music, does that mean we can only record the music, not the soul? And ever since, for me, that was my mission, to catch a moment, to understand what is a moment, and how can we do this? We're 20 years later. I'm on stage in Brussels with the National Orchestra of Belgium in a great concert hall. I am in a moment. I feel like I'm 21 years old. I feel great, especially when you're 44. So why? Because I can travel back in time. I can feel that energy. I feel great. It's fantastic. I am in a moment, and my mission is back 20 years later. What have I done with it throughout those 20 years? Well, I've learned to know when a moment happens. I've learned to know why a moment happens, but not how to catch it. So I was back on my mission. This is an opportunity. If I can record with this orchestra, then I should try and catch that moment, because that is what I want to share. This is the essence of everything. So what is my mission? Let me show you. We hold. This is Pablo Picasso's Guernica. This is Picasso catching a moment in 1937. This is expressing the horror and the barbarity he felt when witnessing events that would lead up to the Second World War. This canvas is huge. I mean, has anyone seen it in real life? No one? Can you witness? It's big, isn't it? What's your name? If I say that this work is way bigger than we see it here, then that's true, isn't it? This work is three and a half meters high. That means more than twice as high as this, or the way you can see it now. It's eight meters wide. It's huge. So at least four times the size as you can see it here. If you're in front of it, it's big, it's huge. And what is it telling you? It's telling you there's a war coming. And that war is unstoppable. There's a darkness looking at you which is inescapable. And that darkness is also in the size of the work, for sure. That's why it's so big, because the war is a monster. That's how Pablo Picasso felt it. So does size matter in art? Does it? I think it does, sure, of course it does. Because seeing it here now, for me, is almost it's ridiculous compared to the original work. But now try to imagine that this is a piece of music. How would it look like? 
if you had to hear it today, it would look like this. This is an MP3. <laughs> Does this express like the darkness which is inescapable? Does it express the war? I don't think so. It's hardly visible. I mean, if you would walk in this room, this would not get your attention. Not at all. But maybe music is different. Maybe music is something which we can zoom in. And then maybe the whole quality will come back. So let's zoom in. What happens? Well, it's deformed. So what have I learned? I have learned that I need a big canvas to record a large orchestra. And I have learned that there is such canvas. But I have also learned that I cannot share it in a way that people listen to music today. Because this is not an interesting canvas if one wants to catch a moment. No, it's not. There is no magic in this. This is way worse than the original work. I think we all agree, don't we? Yeah. This is based on figures, so I'm not making anything up. So I'm on a mission. And what have I learned? That my mission is twofold. I'm not only trying to catch a moment, but I have also need to consider that if I manage to do the impossible, that afterwards I have to consider that maybe I won't be able to share it. So, even doing the impossible could be pointless. So I have to question, what is my canvas? And this is my canvas. This is the canvas I work in at home. The white circle represents my canvas. The size of the circle represents the quality of my canvas. Any quality I need to record music. Dynamics, time information, whatever. And I placed my 90-piece orchestra in that canvas. The size of the orchestra is based on their quality. It's based on whatever such big orchestra has to offer. It's dynamic, it's time information, whatever. And you can see that my canvas is a great canvas because it's big enough to handle anything like a big orchestra. But is it enough to catch a moment? I don't think so. It's good enough to have a really great sound, a fantastic sound, if I may say, but not to catch a moment, not to do one step forward, because this is the canvas that I worked in for some years now, so there's nothing new about it. But to understand what my canvas is, I should have you let you look at what you're used to listen to, the canvas that you used as a consumer. There are two. There's a vintage one, and I'm not talking about vinyl, because vinyl is great. I'm talking about a CD. The white circle represents, again, the quality of that canvas. And as you can see, the quality is nowhere compared to what an orchestra has to offer. So, for me, it's not interesting to do all this work knowing that whatever I will do will end up on a CD. That's pointless. That would be ridiculous. And of course, we've been for the other formats. That's an MP3. Compared to my canvas, it's very small, but of course we know we can zoom in because there's something like psychoacoustics that help you restore what's been blanked out. But come on, this is way worse than my canvas. This is like 10 steps back. I have nothing against an MP3 because that's not my mission. Everything has its purpose. I am just looking what could help me, and this is not helpful, not at all. This is way too small. I want to do one step forward, and this is 10 steps back. So what have I learned? I have learned that I cannot find anything in what's out there yet. So I went to see my engineers, Ronald Brent and Darcy Proper, and told them about my mission, that I've been performing with an orchestra, and that the sensation to be amidst the orchestra is fantastic. And if there's anything I would like to share, it's that moment. But I don't know how to catch it. I know how to evoke it, but how can I catch it? 
and they've introduced me to a new technology. And the technology is Aura 3D 9.1 Immersive Sound. Big word, I know. The definition is even more complicated. But look at what it is. This is a great canvas. This looks like my canvas in size. But all of a sudden, I've got three dimensions. I got height, I got depth. And what's even more, I can see it's a cube. I can see the possibilities. That cube, that could be like the place, the concert hall I was performing with the orchestra. That cube could be that place where I was when I was 21 years old. I just have to know what the room is, understand the room to recreate it. If I manage to do so, maybe I'll be able to catch a moment. Of course, if anything happens within that cube, for sure. So I went on my mission. I started recording, working hard in it, in the room which is the rehearsal room of the orchestra, a room I know very well. A room, a room my engineers know very well, and all the people I work with. A room so familiar for the orchestra that they could say they feel at home in that room. And what I wanted to do is to recreate that room. And if anything magical would happen in that room, I would be able to catch it. But of course, I still had to ask myself, if I do so, and I was feeling very close now to the truth, Will I be able to share it? There's no point in compressing it, putting it on an MP3, or to put it out on a CD. Of course, there's something like a pure audio Blu-ray, but not much of us, or not many of us have these things. So how can I be sure that everybody will have the ability to listen to it, that I can share it with everyone? Well, what I know is that, of course, compared to like an MP3, this is a huge sound file. Well, huge, it's a big file. It's not huge these days. Knowing what Netflix can do, there should be no problem in making this downloadable. There's no problem in streaming this. So it's fine. I'm fine. I can share it. Everything is cool. So I proceeded. We started recording, going for the mixes. Everything was quite complicated, but we had a lot of courage, and there we went. And when I could listen to the result for the first time with my whole team, I was hoping to do a little step forward. Hoping, because I always have great expectations. Why? Because I'm a dreamer. Of course I have. And I was hoping to do this little step, telling myself, if I can do a little step, any step counts. But it was a huge step. We managed to catch that moment. And it was overwhelming. Because the fact that you're in a room and you recreate exactly what happened in that moment, with all its magic, is beyond anything. Really. If it happens to you, it's too much. At first, I thought I was just going a bit crazy. I've been working too hard. And I, my imagination started helping me out. And, and this was not real, but it was, because I could see that everybody in the room had the same sensation. We finally made it, and we were very happy. And we started drinking champagne, of course, to celebrate it. And while being all euphoric, somebody mentioned, but we're in this great room. We're in Darcy's mastering room. People don't have the equipment. She has. What's the point? This is horrible, isn't it? We won't be able to share it. But of course we will be able to share it, because the quality is in the sound file. It's not in your high-end system. This is like a great tuna steak. A great tuna steak is a great tuna steak. It doesn't matter if you eat it from a paper bag or from a golden plate. It is a great tuna steak. It may look better on a golden plate, for sure. But it is a great tuna steak. The same goes for a rotten egg. You can put it on a golden plate. It won't get any better. The quality is at source. So we made it. And therefore, this is my plea. 
This is a plea towards the industry. Make these sound files available. Give the artist his canvas back. Give the audience the opportunity to listen to what an album is really like, what an artist has really made. Give the people the choice to choose for quality. Give yourself the choice to listen to what the future could sound like. Choose for music. Choose for tuna steak. Thank you. <laughs>